Sup guys, we got Oblivion vs. Semitic. I hope I didn't butcher that name completely. I know it's not pronounced that way, but I can't pronounce uh, French names, I'm sorry. So this is uh, for UPL and I missed it live because I was like in a call and like didn't pay that much attention to Smog Truth and I realized when I was on the call that Finch is playing with Ladna, so I went ahead and recorded that with Thedirt, but I realized this game already happened and I spoiled the result of this game in that other video, so I will record the replay of this one, so I'll um, upload the other game afterwards so you don't get spoiled. And so if you don't, if you want to see every game without knowing who wins, basically that's why I do this. So looking at matchup, I want to talk a bit about the teams. I believe it has pretty bad matchup. He has a pincer and his opponent has like a lot of checks to pincer. Has a metal growth which can take any hit. Come and pincer. He just needs some chip damage on pincer to kill it off. Medium mesh or ice punch. He has a Magirna which lifts any hit. Um, Pinsir runs Earthquake in this matter to hit Metagross, but like the Magirna is either Z-Move or Sugarberry, looking at the at the team matchup. Like the Z-Move runs potentially Magirna, Volcarona, Landris. I'm thinking it's Scarf, Garchomp, for attacks and probably Rocks, Landris. Not sure if offensive or offensive yet. Uh, probably defensive. Uh, it probably has to be AV Magirna, cause like... What's your protein Greninja check, like otherwise? <laughs> Yeah, Charlie Berry or Zemo for Corona. Um, what else? What else? Um, obviously, Defog, standard type of Fini, I assume, because like, you need Defog when you have a Vol Corona. You guys know that, and I don't know why I can't talk correct. And Oblivion's time is pretty interesting. And I looked at his team for a while, and I realized this Mew has to be Fist Death, because he's like weak to manage him, and he's like. Weak to Zygarde too, so look at this ban as Zygarde switch in, it doesn't really exist, so this could be defensive Mew with maybe something to hit Zygarde, I don't know if it would have, uh, like will Wisp only is not a counter, I think he has to, ha has to have Ice Beam to prevent Zygarde from setting up on it, if it's Bedev Zygarde. Um, like if he brings the Mew in, the Zygarde goes for sub, Mew should outspeed the Zygarde, but if the Zygarde comes in on the Mew, in that sense, and the, if the Mew comes in on the Zygarde, I meant what? And the Zygarde already has a sub up, that would be pretty bad. So that's why I could see Ice Beam on this. And it's either Scarf Chomp or Scarf Kaleo, but I'm thinking more as Scarf Chomp, because Volcarona runs Charlie Berry these days, and Kaleo doesn't kill with Stone Edge with Charlie Berry. And like it's not super common on Volcarona, but it's like still, it's like used a lot. Like I don't want to say it's standard, because Z Move is also pretty good on Volcarona. It's used to the point where you can't run uh, Edge Kelly as a check anymore. You have to run Edge Chomper, um, or even Rocks Edge Terrakion. Cause, but the reason Edge Terrakion is not really used because I, I would assume it's because of stuff like Ash Ninja, which gets water shuring and just blows Scarf Terrakion away. But like, I've seen uh, some Volcarona run HP, like 120 HP to live like Stone Edge from uh, Guard Chomp through Jelly Berry. Even. And yeah, I think this um, Genus AV2. Oh, I w was I saying that Semiotics Magirna's AV at one point? If I said that, take that bad. I take that bad. Like, I think he's like Z-Move. Or like, if he's not Z-Move, he could be Sugarberry on the Magirna. But yeah, Assault Vest is also an option. I'm not 100% sure. But yeah, going in... I don't know how Blivy is going to do damage with his Pinsir. And like, his Scarf Jump is like walled out by between Feeny and Landris. Like, it's a really tough matchup. Um... Kaleo could be... So now we know that, uh, like I talked about the Kaleo and the Chomp, probably the Chomp is Scarf. Uh, the Kaleo can also be Scarf, but if the Kaleo is not Scarf, um, the potential Z-Move mods are... Like, he has a lot of potential Z-Move mods, to be honest, but I think it's either Kaleo or the, um, the Landers, because uh, Magina has to be AV looking at the team, but let's get into the game. I don't know why I'm rambling for so long. Um, I'm sorry if you guys don't like this. Let me know if you want me to do a shorter... Like, if you want detailed analysis, or if you just want short replays, where I go quick over the turns. But yeah, this is uh, probably a solve with Magirna, and he can either pivot out, predicting a vote switch into his Landris here. I don't think you would ri risk your guard jump. Um, but yeah, the, the floor cannon can come out here, so I would not go Landris. I would probably go for Nature's Madness here, and he just goes for Nature's Madness, and the Magirna is gonna go... Uh, for Volt Switch here, okay. So Olivia wants to grab some momentum. In case he wants to go Metagross there on the floor can he gets in his pincer, but yeah, like I said, he has a lot of checks to the pincer. He's gonna I think he's just gonna fire with restoration to get the damage off on either the Metagross or the Landris. But he the reason he went Metagross there is uh, 
Pinsel runs hyper cutter, so it doesn't get the attack drop from Intimidate before it's mega evolved, so that's smart of him to go Metagross first. But yeah, you guys see this doesn't do too too much. It is 34%. Considering the Metagross isn't mega evolved yet, that doesn't do that doesn't do that much. And yeah, like I said, the Mew probably has to be fifth step because it's like weak to manage the Metagross, Zygarde, stuff like that. Physical attack is in general. And he just brings in the Mew here, and I assume the Mash or Ice Punch is gonna come out. Mash makes a lot more sense, cause like Mew eats Ice Punch better. And if you freeze the Mew, that doesn't really help you that much, cause you freeze yourself, cause of Synchronize. And yeah, he's um, he can fish for another Meteor Mash boost here, cause the Mew has to go for Soft Ball Roost, which is what he just does, and he doesn't get the Mash boost. But Mew's forced to uh, Soft Ball once again, cause it's in 28k range potentially, and he gets a free switch in the Volcarona that way. Um, so like the Mew's still on his Mew, it's probably like, like they both have 4 times weak to rocks Mon, so this has to be default Mew, that's his only potential default, and then he has Roosters Albius, and then he has either Wisp, or two attacks in the last slot, either Wisp 1 attack like Psychic Ice Beam, or like, Ice Beam Psychic, but I think it has still, it still has Wisp, but yeah, he's, um, this sets up on Mew basically is what I'm saying, and he brings in his Scarf Garchomp, which is basically like, If he's not like the Hydro Vortex, Kalia to kill Volcarona potentially through a plus one boost. Um, I would have to calc even uh, if Giga Drain kills Kalia. Because if, if, if Giga Drain kills Kalia, even a Hydro Vortex set is not a check to Volk. Like, I don't even know if Vol Hydro Vortex would kill the Volk, but let's not talk about that scenario. Like, look how scary Volcarona is just in this metagame in general, guys. Like, he forced into his Scarf Trump. Like, if you look at this team, like, Volcarona is so scary to this team. Just in general, if it's like Pax is a good check if it's not Z Psychic, but they're on Z Psychic too, so you never know what to really do. And if he like goes for Fire Blast, either Trump takes a good chunk, or he can also have HPIs and make a, a risky prediction. But you see, he's just gonna go for Quiver Dance, and this forces Obliviate to go for Stone Edge 100%. He can't do anything else unless he's like Adamant Outrage, and he hopes now nah, if he's Adamant, he gets outsped. So like he doesn't pair this with Duck Tree, which makes me think it's HP Ground Volcarona. So like I guess it still can't all go to Chomper and he's kind of forced out here, but like I can like he's trying to like see how Oblivion reacts to this and he obviously had to go guard jump there, but in case he like made a different play, he could have just won with Volcarona. Depending on if it's Charlie or Z move. But yeah, he's uh, probably gonna go to Chomper or Feeny here, because the stone is just so obvious. And yeah, if he goes Chomper, uh, if he goes Landers, which he does, he can either go for a U turn or get up, get up his rocks. As the Kelly comes hard in, so has to throw up the rocks. And now, like I said, it's probably Scarf Jump, and I think it, it would be Double Scarf. So if it's not Z Move Magenta, it has to be uh, like Z Move Kelly, because I think the Chomp is the Landers defensive rocks. Mm, this makes me think. Like, the Feeny is so obvious, so if Oblivion doesn't have anything on this to hit the Feeny, he's gonna double out. And there's something that beats the Feeny, which he doesn't also, he doesn't have that good things to double out on the Feeny. But yeah, this is pretty interesting what he decides to do here. We see Simiatic um, going to Metagross here. Um, I don't know if he's a mastermind and he predicted that it's Command Kaleo. But I assume this is... Um, Probably the Brightneck Blitz Kelly, and he went for Command there to do a lot of damage to Tapu Fini, or to kill Tapu Fini even. So that was a pretty go godly play by um, Simele. Because if this doesn't have Calm Mind, he would not stay in, he would double out on the obvious Fini. Or like HP Electric, he would either HP Electric or double out if he doesn't have Calm Mind. So that was a gold play. Gets in his Metagross, which makes me think um, he's gonna go for a T-Punch or a Zen Hutbot here. And yeah, he goes for Zen Hutbot, which is... Um, I don't know, the Kaldi, yeah, yeah, the Kaldi was at full, so having Zen Hutbot was needed there. I don't think T-Bunch would kill the Kaldi from full, I I thought the Kaldi was, uh, already t had already taken damage. Um, oh yeah, it came in on the Lanus before the rocks were up, so it was at full, I thought it at least took some, at least took the rocks. But yeah, even then it probably was not in range from T-Bunch. T-Bunch, I assume, is like 70 or 80 to Kaldi, I don't really know the Kalk. Uh, maybe a bit more. That definitely doesn't Oko, even though, like... Like, this is not Scarf Kelly, it doesn't run minus defense. Scarf Kelly is on minus defense to Oko for Corona, it's not Shari Berry with Stone Edge. But yeah, he gets this uh, play, uh, this, this just played pretty well by Simiatic. 
Like at that point I can completely understand why Oblivion stayed in kinda. Like you already set up a call mine and like if you switch out you just like give him the multiple meteor mesh chances to get a boost on the Mew because he like forces from softball like at least twice or once or twice. Oh, damn, this was pretty planned out well, so this makes me think the Volcarona is definitely not the psychic move because he has a headbutt on this to get rid of Toxic Packs. Like his team's kind of weak to Toxic Packs because defensive Lando, like Lando shot rocks, I think it's defensive Lando. Scarf Chomp doesn't beat Packs really, Earthquake only does like a bit over half, how much, I don't know, maybe 60, 70? That's just my head calcs. But yeah, he gets rid of the Kelly with his huge for him because that could have beaten the Feeny with the Z move there and now you can either go to Landris or the Scarf jump, but if he goes Scarf jump, he has to predict. So he goes Landris, and he's probably gonna throw up this on rocks to make um, his opponent pressure the defog with the Feeny because there's a Volcarona, which is like the win con at this point. Like, Scarf jump can also win for Simiatic, but Volcarona seems to be like the main win con. And Metagross seems to put in, like, Metagross can put in a lot of work if it comes on the Magirna, which the Magirna's at 50. Like, it just fires off mashes or Ice Punch if it predicts the Lando. But yeah, he's gonna go mm, for protect here. So we, it's probably left over set with HPIs, earthquake, rocks, and uh, protect. So yeah, this is the set that I, I don't know if ABR Ray Scarf has made it, but like I saw Ray Scarf has used it the first time, like he used it on like SPL semifinals. Yeah, you see Simiati going for Defog, which is interesting because rocks has more PP than Defog and. Oblivion just uh, goes for rocks again, so like basically Simiac lost something there, like he d removed his rocks, but Oblivion's rocks, Obliviate, how I think he's called that, uh, but I, I think Oblivion sounds cooler, and I think he's called Flo if I read that correct in the chat earlier, so yeah, he's German, shout out to you if you, read, uh, if you watch this my man, but yeah, the reason this play makes sense is uh, the Fini might probably carry uh, Taunt, so it can Taunt here if the Lannis wants to spam rocks, uh, yeah, he reveals the taunt there, so uh, this is kind of 50 50 because he can predict the taunt. So I'll probably defog here if I'm simulating in case he wants to switch out on the taunt into something that pressures the Fini, which would be like Scizor. But yeah, he gets the play correct, goes for taunt again, Landers goes for rocks. And now he can defog because this is taunted. But he can just get off some chip damage with Earthquake or he can go Pinsir. Or goes Mew, okay. Sorry, he'd go Pinsir. But yeah, that makes sense. Um, the Misty Terrain ran out, so this gets a will o -Wisp here, so... Unless he goes... Like, Volk is like his uh, Simiatic's only play here. So if this mute will either go for Psychic or double out, as if it doesn't have Volt Switch. I think he has to double out, breaking the Volk here. But yeah, you guys will see what happens as he doubles out into Pinsir, which is a really good play, because Pinsir outspeeds Volcarona. The Volk just was so obvious, they're like... There was no way he just let something take a will o -Wisp if he only has the Volcarona. And he might be bulky Volk on a set because Psychic would still do some damage to offensive Volk. Or he just didn't need the Volk at 100%. I don't know. But. Yeah, he he, he basically figured the the Mew has like to have the role to check stuff. And he already knew it's Fist of Mew, so he knows it doesn't do that much damage. But yeah, he can go into his Landris, Magirna, or Meta. No, he doesn't want to go Metagross. He can go Landris or Magirna here. But he decides to go Metagross, that's pretty interesting, because if he predicts that and goes for Earthquake, he gets a crit there with um, with Frustration, which sucks a bit, but I don't think it will matter for the outcome of the game. I mean, not Earthquake day makes a lot of sense, I had the video pause real quick because I didn't really know what to say, uh, I lost my train of thought. Not Earthquake makes sense because you don't want to give the Lando a free switch in. Um, So yeah, Semiotic already reveals an but so his other move probably Mio Mash and Then it could be Ice Punch, T Punch, or it could also have some other interesting moves as Like it could be pursued technically because it's Yes he has a Magirna, but if the Magirna is not a Solbus and it's offensive, Lele is still a big threat, like you don't switch in Magirna and the specs Lele that well, like especially if you're not AV, like HP fire does a ton. Does a million and you guys see here, um, Oblivion switches out the Pinsir. Maros wouldn't wasn't able to Oko Pinsir, but he predicts him the safety. Pinsir as yes, he can 
go into either um, Landris or Mew and that probably confirms that he doesn't have Ice Punch. Or like, I guess he could have also gone for Mesh there even if he had Ice Punch because that would have hit the Mew a bit hard and I don't think he would go Landris there on a potential Ice Punch. But yeah, he makes a great play of breaking the pins there switch. I'm, I probably wouldn't have made that play but like it works out really well. He knows that Pinsir even though it doesn't have the best matchup this game after critting the Metagross there. It can put in some work, like, it still has to weaken Majorna and Feeny, but the light game it could technically put in work. But yeah, I assume we're gonna see the Mew come out here. Yeah. And this threatens the Volt, like, this threatens everything with the will o -Wisp. But I think he will, um, if he has knockoff or psychic, he will go for that. I don't think he would go double out this time. Because Simulating might predict him to double out, because he did that last time, if I recall correctly. So yeah, he stays in this time with his Mew. What? He does not stay and he doubles out again. Oh my god. Okay. I'm completely wrong. He doubles out again into Pinsir. I thought I thought he wouldn't because he might try to catch his opponent. But I can completely understand that play. Okay, okay. This guy's too good for me. I got that play wrong. So yeah, he's going to fire off another frustration or Earthquake depending on what he wants to predict. But the man has died at two frustration at this point and Majina takes a lot from Earthquake. So he'll probably go to Landris here but we will see what happens. Keeping Feeny healthy is important to defog later on for the Volk. But he goes Landris on a frustration and that I believe he gets another crit there which uh, sucks a lot. So he's getting a bit lucky at his pinches as well. Training got two crits already so this kind of sucks for his opponent. But like this wouldn't have two k I don't think because Intimidate... That also would that only would have done like 35 or 38. I don't know. Like I don't think it wouldn't never have all code. Like even if it only did 40, this still would have lived too. But yeah, now he gets to either sack the Landris or let any something else take damage. But Oblivion decides he doesn't want to take more helmet on his pins there. I don't know if he breathed the Majorna there. But he decides to go Landers, which gives the potential for his opponent. Like, his opponent can get up rocks here. Which is what he does. Because, like, Landers don't carry edge at the moment. HPIs might have killed at 38. I'm not 100% sure. But going for rocks there makes a lot of sense. Because, like, the pincer is basically dead if it switches out. And, like, if you only have HPIs and it doesn't kill and you run the cog, like, why would you go for that? Actually, HPIs would have killed after Rocky Helmet, yeah. But I can understand the rocks play too. So yeah, now obviously Oblivion wants to get up his own rocks to make his opponent uh, defog so his pincer doesn't just die. And like that Volcron is just such a threat. Like why would you not get up rocks here? He takes an HPI to the face. That is a clean to it KO. Um, unless he goes for protect here. Yeah. If he goes for protect he can live another one. But he's gonna not go for protect. I assume he's gonna predict um, something here, but he he just makes a safe play, okay. But like, see, see, Simiatic predicted that he went for Yujin, so I, that's why I thought he wouldn't go for predict, because like, protect, he wouldn't go for protect there, I thought, but he just went for protect anyway, because he didn't lose anything from it, because now he lives another HPI, unless um, it was a roll early, and he got a like, min roll earlier, or mi mid roll. But yeah, after he got up the rocks, he basically, Ob Oblivion doesn't have U-turn in this, which kind of makes him want to off... Uh, yeah, kind of makes him have to HP Ice here, I think. If Simiatic stays in and he earthquakes, he's just in a bad position. So this makes him HP... I think he has to HP Ice or switch out, but if he switches out, he loses momentum if he u turns. So, not too sure about that, but he gets the play correct. Which uh, brings in the Mew on the... on the HP Ice. And now he can pressure the Fini potentially by doubling out. Or just getting some chip damage. The thing is, like, he, no, 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 I was about, uh, I was like doubling out, but he doesn't have anything to double out into that stuff, Fini from defogging, so. He would probably just attack the Fini. He just gets. reveals that he has Ice Beam, that would have killed the Lannis, and. that reveals that this is his Zyga check, and. Yeah, this is kind of weird, because, like, the Fini was so obvious there, but. Like, like I said, he doesn't have anything to double out that pressures this. Like, Magina, yes, but Magina is so low. Like, Magina was the only thing that could pressure the Fiend. Then you still have to predict. Um, actually, he probably would have sacked the Managras if you go Magina there. But you don't gain that much from going Magina, is what I'm trying to say. And he also could have sacked the Landros, so it was too risky to double. I can get behind it completely. 
So if this Mew doesn't have Taunt, which it probably doesn't have, this uh, Fini is gonna defog, I assume, after the... But you're gonna take some rocks there, so this is gonna either go for Flurkin or Volt Switch. I assume he's gonna either go with Omajirna or Sack of the Landris, but he goes for an Aegis Madness. So, okay, I, this, I really didn't think he would do that. Flash Cannon does a good chunk there. Not sure if this is max special attack fee, um, from the Majorna, because it only did 30%. I would thought it would do a little bit more, but maybe it's a plus for Death Nature Fini, which is why. Which explains the damage. But only did that a little bit. Yeah, now he decides to sack off. His land was as Fini can't kill this, it probably has just a standard set with Taunt Moonblast, Defog, and Aegis Madness. And it's AV, so like obviously can't kill this. Like Moonblast won't kill even if it's not AV, but I don't know. Uh, yeah, just forget what I said. Yeah, I need I need something to drink here. I'm messing up my ration. Um, yeah, he sacks off the Landers here, which gives the Majorna a Soul Heart boost. And now you can either go to Garchomp, his Metagross, he has pretty much free choice, he can Volcarona too. Goes Metagross, I assume he's gonna click the Mash or the Ice Punch, but Mash is probably the better play. And he gets a crit there, which is some Revenge Hacks, he has been getting hacks so far. And this is in range to die for Meteor Mash now, but... Landris might avoid a 2 KO if he gets two low rolls. So, uh, I'm not sure if he wants to sack off his Mew or if he would... Mm, I think he should have sacked the Magirna instead. But he wanted to keep it as a fodder, which is understandable. But like, it's always risky to switch into Metagross, like... You can always get a crit or a mash race, but we'll see if Landers avoids the 2 hit KO, which it doesn't. Oh, actually! Yeah, it has leftovers, so it can avoid a 2 hit KO here. Um, the protect is so obvious, like Simiatic is, he's, like the protect is, it's not always the, like he lives any, but he doesn't have a reason to go for protect is what I meant to say. God, English dude, I should do these videos in German. So, he's just gonna earthquake oblivion because he has no reason not to, the ground resist doesn't exist. And, he's either gonna go Fini or sack the Metagross here. So he goes Chapu Fini, wants to save his Metagross as it can still outspeed the Mew and the Majorna and put in some work and outspeed this Landris if it comes in later. But yeah, like Pursuit earlier basically confirmed that this is not. This is not fucking. Dude, I can't think. It's not Ice Punch, is what I meant. I had to pause it again for a few seconds. And the last move, I don't know if it would be Hammer Arm. If he's not HP Fire Majorna or a Fire Move on Garchomp, I could see Hammer Arm because he only has Volk to beat Ferrothorn otherwise. And if they have Rocks up, you cannot bring Volk in on Ferrothorn. So I could definitely see Hammer Arm on the Metagross. The Oblivion, I can see him going into Majorna here. Or Protecting to get more health. Protecting to get more health is what he decides to do. Uh, there's a Moonblast which might tweet KO the Majorna. Which would be a potential, well, potentially wise. He merely goes for that. But yeah. He just brings out the Majorna. I don't think that's even to it kills Moonblast. As it doesn't, it only does 8%. And now he has to take like a Flash Can, something to the face if he wants to defog or Volt Switch or Floor Can, something like that. Probably Floor Can? No, you Volt Switch is okay. So Floor Can to do big damage to the Fini might be the play. Because he can't kill you next turn anyway and you still get the Volt Switch after. Or to two it KO with the Floor Can. But yeah, he gets in his land, gets some more leftovers. Doesn't go for Protect this time though. Breaks the Taunt. Oh. But the protect was obvious, so I don't know why he taunted that. I don't really understand this this turn specific like this specific turn. I don't get it. But yeah, he, he reads Ice Beam on Majorna, so like I said, he's kind of weak to Zygarde. So not only Ice Beam on you, also on Majorna in case they try to drag dance on you, try to sub on you. Like you don't, you cannot miss a Flurry Can, or like if they try to sub and get minus in your special attack that way, you have Ice Beam to prevent that. Like you don't have to risk that basically. But yeah, he Simiatic reveals Focus Blast, which... Flash Cannon should kill this from 15%, so I don't think he has Flash Cannon. He's probably... Maybe Focus Blast, the Bolt Beam, Magirna? Um, with the last move, maybe Shift Gear, Trick Room. Yeah, he seems to be on offensive set. Um, he didn't go for a Z move there, so I think he's... Um, not Z move Magirna, because... Why would you not... Like, why would you risk that Focus Blast unless you're really confident you want to save your Z move? We will see in the future, like in the next turns, if that if he had like if he has the Z move. 
But he goes guard jump here, which gives him a... Yeah, I was about to say... Like, he doesn't have switch into Earthquake at this point, but you guys see it is a Sugarberry Majuna, so I was correct. It's not Z-Move Majuna. I wasn't really sure about the item. Even though I talked about Sugar potentially, but I don't see it that often. Um, yeah, his only play here is probably Ice Beam. Like, his opponent, like, Oblivion doesn't know that this is Sugar, so... He's obviously not gonna double out, he's just gonna Earthquake, because he didn't have... Like, Earthquake was his best play there. If he, if he doesn't, if he thinks this is not sugar, yeah, this is pretty clutch. Um, you wouldn't shift gear here, and trick room would be a potential play, but then, yeah, trick room would be a decent play here, because he probably two hit gear the mu. Uh, you killed the mu at thirty. I thought it was at full for a second. Yeah, you could shift gear here, um, a trick room here if you had it. Shift gear was the, would be the wrong play, because scarf jump I think outspeeds Majorna after shift gear even. But yeah, we see the ice beam probably come out to pick off the uh, guard chomp. And now it's one of the Volcarona checks gone. And Volcarona should win uh, if it comes in on the Mew. Or on the Landris as he sacks off Magenta to the Pinsir. And now he can bring in his guard chomp or his Metagross. It decides to bring out the Metagross. Take some quick attack. And it's probably going to go for Mash here. And he misses. So he's getting Hex even more. But... This would die to quick attack now, so he goes hard guard jump. Didn't predict that, but yeah, that's a scarf jump. Quick attack is a good chunk, and he can go for a dragon claw here. Yeah, this has to go for outrage. He just needs some chip damage off, I guess, and like it doesn't really matter what he does, because if he comes in with Volcarona, Orlando, or Mew, he just wins the game anyway. He just has to be careful that Earthquake from Landris doesn't. Bring his Volcarona in range to die from quick attack from Pinsir. But also Metagross... Um, <laughs> nah, actually, Metagross doesn't die because he dodged that mash earlier. But, like, it, Metagross is in quick attack range is what I meant. But yeah, this Outrage 3 it kills the Landris after Protect gave it more leftovers. I think, yeah, was it 3 it kill? The Landris could get up rocks for the Volcarona, which is nice for Oblivion. But like, he doesn't have a play now. He doesn't have a play. Um... Unless the Mew lives up. Yeah, no, the Mew's fist left. The Mew lives an Outrage. He can go for South Bolt. But this is a free switch. He gets a crit there. I don't think that mattered. Because, like, he also... Like... It, actually, the Volk dies to Quick Attack. The Volk dies to Quick Attack after Rocks probably. Like, I was about to say he could go hard Volk on the Mew. Like, he would have just sacked this Garchomp to the Mew. Let it get Wisp, etc, etc. Let the Mew heal. And after that, he would have probably gone hard Volcarona. I'm not really too sure. Maybe that could matter a bit, but like he got hexed a bit uh, so much earlier, he deserved that. If he needed that hex, he deserved it for sure. But I don't think he needed it. Um, because like if he kills he, this, Oblivion can't go hard pinsy. So if he kills the Mew, even if the Volk is in quick attack range, like the pinsy doesn't win. He gets revenge by Chomp. Uh, yeah, exactly. Get the range by Chomp. Feeny might live a hit also if it's like a roll. Mm -hmm. Not really sure if Feeny lives one because like I really had got nerfed. So Feeny might live with a hit from 58. 58.9. He switches out there because he was confused with the guard jump and he didn't have to risk that. Texas is Metagross and he can go back into Scarf Jump here and pick off the win, which is either a nice last ditch try, but it still doesn't win Obliviate the game. You'd have to SD again on the miss, I think. Yeah, SD again on the miss. Maybe could have won the game, but... Yeah, yeah, I don't know why I didn't go for that. Maybe he... Maybe Semitic had some accurate move? Not sure. Like, SD again could have won the game. On a miss. Like, he still knew the miss, but, like, it could have won the game, technically. But it's probably gonna go for Outrage here. Like, it doesn't matter. Dragon Claw kills, too. Some Gotchams also um, run dual chop for Smeagol. Focus Sash, it's like a roll to kill. But yeah, this was super long. Like, 30 minutes for a replay is long. I mean, it was 50 turn game. But yeah, I'm sorry if you guys don't like pausing. And I kind of lost my train of thought in this one. Because like, this is already like the... I think the third video I'm recording today. And it is 1am here. So, bear with me, guys. I'll try to narrate it better next time. I know I have still have to work on stuff. I, ha I have to work on how I pronounce stuff. I have to work on how I speak. And... Yeah, it's like basically... 
I mess up sometimes. I'm human. I'm still kind of new to YouTube. I think I'm uploading for like eight months now, but don't quote me on that. It might be a little bit more, a little bit less. But yeah. I thank you guys for watching. Let me try to be a bit more energetic towards the end here. And Samiri picked up the win, which is pretty cool. It was his first time playing this OUPL. Let me fix the dimensions real quick for the smoke on forum. And we will look at the score and everything. And then you guys can see that. Um, yeah, won't you guys can see the other games. Like, it's not a spoiler. I already uploaded the other games before this. Actually, this game's already happened, but it's not marked yet. Oh, the Finchinator game is also not marked yet. So I won't spoil the Finchinator game. I upload the Finchinator game before this. Uh, no, no, no. I upload the Finchinator game after this, right? Because I spoil. In the Finchinator game. I did spoil this game. So I uploaded this before the Finchinator game. Okay, so I won't spoil the Finchinator game. So, <laughs> sorry for that. Wild. Okay, okay. So the score is if I don't spoil these two games. Uh, two and two between... Uh, this is P2's team and this is Blunder's team. Now, I always forget the second manager. I think Blunder's managing with Jirachi. And I think DK is the second manager on P2's team, but not 100% sure. I always mix people up and like, managers and stuff. This is not SPL, for SPL I could like keep it in mind a bit easier. Like they have like some logos but they don't have like official logos so like I never put them in a the thumbnail because it's not like really team logos, it's just like some Pokemon or some avatar or some f Dude, I forgot the English name for this guy, what's it called? Like in German it's called Wanderer, I forgot the English name. But it's basically a guy, it's not a sim, it's not a symbol like you would see it for a team of like a soccer club of like SPA but yeah, anyways my, my voice is running out I thank you guys for watching I can't talk anymore I will have my duty to a guest life of the dirt hope you guys are interested in that and like it's always cool to see how other people play not just me I mean I haven't uploading been uploading that many PS lives because I'm focusing on these tournament games because it's a lot of fun to catch them and like see what people use. Like get to see more Z moves, get to see more team styles and that's gonna be pretty hype for World Cup. I said in another video that World Cup is in two weeks but I was wrong because like I think tri tryouts is in two weeks, not the World Cup it started, starts. Anyways, yeah. Thank you for watching and Dogwitch signing out. Peace my guys. Of course I mess up my outro every fucking time. Blah.